everyone, my name is Melissa, and in this video I want to go over my approach to the conditional win streak challenge from Excel BI on LinkedIn. You'll find a link to Vijay Verma's profile at the bottom of this page. The task is to return consecutive win streak dates for three wins in a row if they occur within a 180 day period. If you haven't participated yet and want to give this a go yourself, I highly recommend it. You'll find a link to the challenge in the description below this video. All right, let's go to the Power Query Editor. I'm going to start with a group by on both the name and the one column. So press down control, click this column as well and select group by. This adds both fields as keys to the grouping on top. And now I can select the operation, or rows, and give the new column a name. I'll call that date, and press OK. This returns a table with the unique combinations for the selected keys. But inside the formula bar, I can also specify an optional group kind parameter. So at the end here, Enter a comma, group kind local. Select that. Now watch the table carefully as I press that check mark. You can see that an additional row just appeared because it's now taking sequences into account. All the data is inside the nested tables. So let's click off to the side so we can take a peek inside. And this first table here. It has one sequences, but it only consists of two rows. Therefore, I can discard this table. The second table also has one sequences and it meets the requirement of three rows. So for this table, I have to see if the first date and the third date are within that 180 day period. If there are more rows, I have to repeat that process. Let's open the advanced editor window. Let's format this a bit. So we've already seen that there are tables that we can ignore because they don't meet the requirement. We can create a conditional statement to see if that's the case right here. So if Table row count, and to the underscore here, so that refers to the nested table that we're seeing here on the screen. That needs to meet that criteria of greater than or equal to three. And it has to be a one streak. So the one column has to contain Y refer to that one and this returns a list so i can use item access to extract a single value now the value across all of the rows are exactly the same so accessing the first item will do perfectly fine and that needs to be equal to y i can omit this i don't need that if these criteria are met then we have to create some additional logic. To do that, I'm going to use a record. Then use the record initializer, a set of those square brackets, and press enter. And the first field that I'm going to create in this record is going to be called D. Because as you can see on the screen, the date column, that contains text strings. And I need dates to be of a date data type. So I want to transform the contents in that list. So list transform, refer to the date column, comma, date from. Enter a comma here so we can create an additional field in our record and I'm going to call that field N. Here I want to perform that calculation between the first and third date. To do that, I'm going to rely on item access, referring to 
the zero based index position of an item within a list. The thing is that I don't have an index to use, but that's quite easily to create. List transform. I'm going to create my index using the list initializers. That's a set of those curly brackets. Start from zero. And it's going to be in continuous range up to the number of items in my list. So list count. Refer to the value D. And I'm going to have to subtract one because my list is zero based. And I'm also going to subtract two because I'm going to offset each value with the value of two because I have to compare the first item with the third item. So I'll subtract three here. And now I can do some conditional logic. So if number from I'm going to access my date list with the item access operator, those curly brackets again, I'm going to refer to the current value of the index. So we've created that list with indexes here. I'm going to refer to the current value and add two to that. So I'm offsetting that by two. And then I'm going to look up the date. So again, refer to the list D using item access to enter that current index value there. Now we can test if this value is within that 180 day period. So this has to be smaller than or equal to 180. If that is the case, if this criteria is met, I want to get the valid index positions. I'm going to create a list. It's going to start from the index that we're currently on up to the index offset by two. So index plus two. Else, I just want to return a null. This means that our list n can contain null values. I want to remove those. So let's add that here. List remove nulls. Just wrap that around it. And I also want to make sure to get distinct indexes by wrapping list union around it. So list union ensures that all my indexes will appear at max just once. Enter a comma so we can create another field in our record. Let's call that R. And for R we're going to construct a list with valid dates to return. So list transform. Supply the list with valid indexes. And for each index, we're going to retrieve the value in the dates list. So refer to the dates list. We'll use item access here again. Pass in the underscore. From that record, we can return the value for R. We'll use field access at the final branch. So else, I just want to return the value false. See what this does. Press done. So we get some lists and some falses, and we can omit those by filtering out those rows. I'll go back to the advanced editor window once more. And we'll add table select rows. comma, and we'll refer to 
each value in the date column that's unequal to false. That's what we want to retain. Let's close that off. Press done. So we no longer need the one column. I can remove that or just use selection and projection. I'm going to go with that. So in a set of square brackets, in another set of square brackets, I can select the columns that I want to keep from this table. So that's the name column, comma, date. So this will project the table to one with fewer columns. And now I can extract the values in the date column by expanding them to new rows. Awesome. So in this video, you've seen my approach to the conditional win streak challenge from Excel BI. I hope you've enjoyed this one. Thank you so much for watching. All the best. Hey everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the contents covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.